Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. You join us for the Go Home Show for Hard to Kill, our Impact pay-per-view for January. This show doesn't actually bring us too many matches for that particular pay-per-view because the problem is when you have the tapings, we still have four weeks to the event. So uh, you never know who could show up in that four weeks, who we could sign, who we could bring in on a loan. So a lot of stuff will be down to yeah who we can bring in and obviously take the roster away from the, the realms of realism. So speaking of realism, impact taping in Full Sail University, that's not realistic, but we do get a 350 fan attendance. So it's showing you at the moment that until we're in a good position making a lot of profit, then we can get a bit more adventurous. But we need to get the size of the company up first and foremost, get the people in the door. And then we can start to really make some moves. And hopefully, the plan is make it a three-way war between WWE, All Elite Wrestling, and Impact Wrestling. But a long way to go. Anyway, tonight's show, we start off with EC3 in the ring. It's a 45 promo. And it basically just says, Rich One, you know I'm going to try and win the championship off of you at Hard to Kill. Hit it young. I see you've got a problem with Rich One. You get in my way of me making, you know, me winning this championship for me control, you know, you're making me be unable to control my narrative because you're in the way, which means uh, you have got a problem with you as well. So EC3 says, just watch what is about to happen because that could happen to you come this Sunday because obviously this would be the taping just beforehand. And we had EC3 take on the captain, Sean Dean, and about that had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. And we'd EC3 defeat Sean Dean in 638 with a sweet meat sizzler. A 40 rated match up there. And 16 for Sean Dean, who was off his game. But I think we'll probably have a lot more of this until we move away from the taping format. So we'll probably bring in a lot of enhancement guys and girls just to keep the roster fresh and you know allow our actual contracted superstars to have. Yeah, just to have all the best momentum in the world, so when they come together at events, it all works out for the better. And after the matchup, EC3 just beats down Sean Dean just to show how damn dominant he is. That was a 30 segment. Moving along, we had a terrible matchup as we had Triple XL defeat the Tate brothers in 11.56 when AC Rabeno pinned Brandon Tate with a rock bottom. Just a 32 here, but a good win for Triple XL. Uh, yeah, as I say, we're going to look to build up AC Romero, but at the same time, see what we can do with Larry D as well. More tag action and a decent matchup saw the team of Ace Austin and Madman Fulton defeat Swoggle and Tommy Dreamer in 10.06 when Madman Fulton pinned Tommy Dreamer. In terms of in-ring work, Ace Austin was head and shoulders above everyone else. Swoggle weak link. I want to try and do something with him. There is plans. And we'll see if those plans do fully pay off. But uh, a 46 matchup, pretty good, all things considered. After the matchup, we just see Swoggle backstage. He's upset, he's distraught, gutted that not only he lost again, but his friend Tommy Dreamer get beaten down by Austin and Fulton. He then bumps into Brian Myers, and Myers is just mocking him. And he just says, Look at you, man, you lost again. What a loser. How is he even friends with you? He said, you know what, I'll tell you what, if you can get someone to be your tag partner at the pay-per-view, then, yeah, we'll have it two-on-one, Swoggle and a partner versus Brian Myers. And we'll see how that goes down. So a 36 there, as we have one matchup put in for Hard to Kill. Then another matchup that was poor, as we had Madison Rain gain more momentum with a win over Killer Kelly in 7.20 with the Shining Yakuza kick. A 36. Another matchup that gives Madison the momentum, but at the same time also allows Killer Kelly some more exposure in America to get her over. The Killer, uh, the killer Queen just picks up the win. We then had the Inflictors of Pain in action, and Dinza and Slamani defeat Reno Scum, when Slamani pinned Adam Fornstow with the last chapter. A 47 here, again just making the former come and Rizar look as dominant as possible. And 47 is a pretty good result. They're only going to get better and better as time goes on. After the matchup, though, we have a promo from the world's most dangerous tag team. And they say, you've came here, you've tried to take over our spot. So we're inflicting a, a rematch on you at 
hard to kill. Not just a normal rematch, but we want a no disqualification match. No rules. And we'll show that with weapons that we can be the most dangerous tag team in Impact Wrestling. So a rematch there, but I wanted to expand that field a little bit more. And that's a 44 rated segment. Next up we have Diona Peruzzo come down to do some colour commentary for the Fallen Knockouts match. That is a 39 rated segment. And the match itself was her challenger at Hard to Kill, Jessica Havoc, who defeated Taya Valkyrie in 8.30 with a Demon Drop. So a 42. James Mitchell's on the different side of the field he face heel divide even. Not gonna lie, didn't know he was her manager in this game, so I'll need to remove that. But yeah, uh, basically just giving Havoc some momentum going into the pay-per-view. Uh, Taya had a good performance though, so she, I think she's someone I always seem to just don't let win. So maybe I should actually give her a push in the future, but a good win for Havoc. And that means there's a big bit of momentum going into that knockouts match at Hard to Kill. Next, we have a bout that had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling as Leo Rush defeated Jake Christ in 11-17 with the Dragon's Call. A 37. Disappointing performance in a, from Leo here. Both of the guys didn't click, and all Leo was off his game, so someday it maybe be a... A low, for, uh, a low 50 and a high 50, uh, 49 rating. Disappointing here, but we all have off days. He's still young, and it was just him showing again that he's good in the X Division. And then Don Callis announces that we will see for sure a hard to kill that X Division match between Leo Rush and Rohit Raju, which is a 30. Next up, we're ready for our main event. Ethan Page cuts a promo on Rich Swan. He says, you know, you, you've got many people against you, but the North needs to get back on the winning trail, and they're going to start tonight with a victory over Rich Swan. And it won't be Ethan Page's fault if one of Rich Swan's many rivals cost them the victory tonight. That's a 44. And the main event was a good one, 49. This is a matchup. Rich Swan defeats Ethan Page in 1303 with a tornado spin kick. So... A good matchup, that's the kind of highest we can kind of look for just now. High high 40s, low 50s until we get some more overness. But the champion stands tall. And we end the show with a super massive brawl between EC3, Rich Swan, Willie Mack, Eric Young, Joe Doring, Carol Anderson, Ethan Page and Josh Alexander. Probably adding uh, Doc Gallows as well. Just so many teams that are against each other that are going to see a massive brawl. So we'll finish the show, which was a 45, gained us popularity in 33 regions. We'll jump back into the main screen now, as you see just the Tuesday week 1 of January, so a long way to go. So we're guaranteed the World Heavyweight Triple Threat match, we're guaranteed Diona versus Jessica Havoc, we're guaranteed Hawkins versus Swoggle and Partner. The Tag Team Championships will be in the line, I just want to see if we can maybe bring people in, because we do have, to say, a long time to go. Um, we we'll probably utilise Ray Phoenix as well because he'll be back from that engineer. Didn't want to kind of hamper him anymore. So overall, looking forward to what could be a fair, sensational clash. But uh, as I say, week one of January now in that event, the fourth week on a Sunday. I'm probably going to add in a lot more pay per views. I'm just going to run with that model, uh, and we'll see how it goes. But as you can see from size, we're small. We're a long way off medium, so it's going to be a case of just putting these shows in, and once we're popular, more guys will want to join us in loan, and we'll go from there. We'll take a look actually here, and that is a lot of people unhappy with us. In fact, it's just MVS TV, so we'll probably lose another network. So yeah, a long way to go with just 94,000 fans watching Impact, but hey, hopefully we get to like episode 200 and we're like one of the best companies about. So thanks for watching, it's much appreciated, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show, and we'll get there. It'll, it'll always be rough for the first couple of months, and then we'll have some proper good fantasy booking. So thanks for watching, take it easy, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you for our next event. Impact Wrestling. Hard to kill. Bye bye.